Thank you for being here. Oh, thank you for being here, my friend. Yeah. Yeah. Good friend Eric Bugenhagen reporting in here, fellas, to give you guys a golden tidbit. He said, Eric, the tidbits have been lacking. And they have. And you know why that is? It's because I've been focused on just horsing big boy weights, okay? You can check out my shorts, see the lunges, the freaking horse sorcery with the pectoralis flies. Uh, and then on top of that, you know, we've been doing a lot of freaking, um, like, I don't know, I got the gym reviews, guys, and the freaking, uh, you know, what is it, the, the reactions to the react, you know what I mean, all these kinds of things. Um, but, Siri, let's cut the chit chat and talk about the golden tidbit. Okay, here's the deal, fellas. You know, I'm a co-owner, psycho freaking pharma. And, uh, you know, I'm not calling all the shots. You know what I'm saying? I'm just one half of the freaking puzzle. But uh, basically, they made like a, they came up with their own creatine monohydrate. Because let's be honest, creatine is like one of the most freaking tried and true staples. But a lot of people, including myself in the past, have uh, considered themselves like non-responders to it. And um, I think that's because a lot of people are like, well, you know, I don't respond. I eat a lot of, uh, you know, fish and, uh, you know, steak and that kind of stuff. And I think a lot of people fall in that category if they think it just doesn't do baloney for them. All right. And again, I've taken creatine on and off for 20 years. You know what I'm saying? And only a few times did I really notice, like, the bulbous water gain, the intramuscular water retention you know what i'm saying that bulbous peak freak glycogen overload saturation um anyways shall we get to the freaking tidbit so basically uh these guys came out with the, these we we came out with an absolutely killer freaking deal um they just want to I, I don't know you know god bless darren he's the the head honcho of psychopharma he just decided to make it the best price creatine on the market. You know what I'm saying? He said, hey, he reached out to me. He said, Sticky Ricky, <laughs> make a video talking about, you know, how good of a freaking deal this is. And uh, and then, like, a couple other people, like, maybe talk about how, like, the dosing, you know, and that this is such a good deal that it's not a problem. You know, because they always say the maintenance phase is five. I've seen three grams to five grams, and everyone talks about the the uh loading phase is a 20 grams you know what i'm saying um so i did my research because i like to be informed if i'm gonna scream at the camera with gusto and cojones i better believe in what i'm saying you know what i'm saying you feel what i'm freaking saying so i said okay you know i believe it because five grams is adequate for that of a pencil neck right but what about a big bulbous behemoth okay so i like many other sophisticated gym rats go check out the PubMed journals guys and i'll link this freaking journal why now let's link it to the description i stumbled across a dosing and timing protocol or whatever a 2016 PubMed journal covering none other than that of creatine monohydrate including other supplements as well but it did get my wheels churning okay because I, as I'm reading this, I'm just thinking to myself, I'm like, yeah, you know what? Why is it always five gram dose? Why is it always five gram? That's the standard. You know what I'm saying? Serving is always 5,000 milligrams, right? And the loading phase is like, okay, but what is that based off of? So luckily this freaking journal states it perfectly to obliterate the uh, connotation that you need five grams for freaking maintenance or, you know what I'm saying, or the long term you can take. And the whole point is eventually reach saturation. But I'm thinking to myself, it's like, you know, I'm twice the size of the average pencil neck. So does that mean that I still is five grams adequate for someone of my stature, right? Well, luckily in this freaking, and guys, I'm absolutely bamboozled by this. This is why I'm like, on top of making the freaking, you know, tick, talk tippity top of the brain freaking spewing the knowledge at the camera for this freaking product 
I'm like, you know what? No, this is a this is a golden tidbit, actually. This is a golden tidbit. Because guys, I I've never looked into this before, but for a loading phase, what I saw was 0.3 grams per, per kilogram of body weight. So I bust out the freaking calculator. You know what I'm saying? I'm about 275 pounds right now. That's 125 kilos. So I'm no freaking mathematician, you know what I'm saying? But I have a calculator and 125 times 0.3 put me at 37.5 grams for the loading phase, okay? Now again, you know, the freaking general statement was 20 grams loading phase and five grams of maintenance, three to five grams of maintenance. So now I'm thinking to myself, holy buckets, 37 and a half grams for a loading phase, that's like pretty much double than what I've ever done in the past. And a lot of times I don't even do the loading phase because a lot of people say it's not necessary. Five grams alone will get you a freaking saturation over time. It just takes longer. But if you're anything like me, you take creatine for a bit and then you just stop it. That's what I've done so much in the past because I never really noticed too much. Um, so what I did, freaking find just absolutely fascinating was the 37 and a half loading phase. Okay, cool. But let's do the math. There was a point one, there was a study, this is in the same one, you can find this, but it, it was a 32 week phase where they gave these people 0.1 grams of creatine, 0.1 gram per kilogram. So again, kilogram, I'm freaking 125 kilograms, right? So 0.1, that's 12 and a half grams for the freaking 32 week, uh, you know, cycle basically. So 32 weeks, okay, 12 and a half grams, right? The freaking people saw strength gains, lean mass gains, okay? And it noted there that um, the optimal timing, and I've, again, this never crossed my mind, is post-workout, post-workout. And it makes sense because they say that your freaking muscle cells are extra sensitive to the, uh, you know, the glucose uptake after you've just humped and pumped and hoisted heavy steel. You know what I'm saying? Like that's when you can suck down the sugars and it just all goes to refilling the glycogen storage. So that makes sense, right? The post-workout. But you know what? I guess it was always just like, well, I in the past I've taken pre-workouts that had creatine in it. So it was like pre-workout creatine. Plus it was like if I was ever making my own pre-workout concoction, I would put some pre-workouts, put some pump powder. I'd throw the creatine in there too. Maybe I'd put some carbs because that was something that made, that alone made the creatine work so much better for me was, you know, back in the day, as I mentioned earlier in this video, the only, there was only two times basically that I ever noticed anything from taking creatine. And both times it was the original EAS, um, God, I can't remember what it was called. Uh, it doesn't even matter. Phosphagen, I think it was called. And it was basically just dextrose creatine beta alanine. And it was saying, take like, I don't know, it was just saying dose throughout the day, okay? And it was the stuff was so delicious that I probably was drinking it like freaking just, because that, that was like the first time that um, I was going all in on creatine. So I was, take, I was taking like six shakes a day, okay? And it had dextrose too. And then another time was the original like Saison from Gaspari. And I went back and I looked, I was like, oh, well, that stuff works so well. And again, I think it had like, um, I think it had like sugar in it, like that's some sort of, fast car, but then it also had like alpha lipoic acid, like a glucose uptake, like a um, glucose disposal agent, helps shuttle it more effectively in the muscle cells. Okay, but anyways, I came to the conclusion, like holy buckets, that's, yeah, you gotta take it with freaking simple sugars, right? Spike the insulin, it shuttles it to the muscles, okay. So the freaking, the carbs alone with the creatine, like it, I feel like anytime taking creatine monohydrate now without carbs, it's just throwing the creatine away. It's like, it's not about how much you're shoveling down, it's about how much you're freaking absorbing. And if you're just taking it fasted or whatever, you're probably not gonna absorb much at all, right? So along, that alone, you're like, well, I'm a non-responder, okay? But then also, you know, the freaking, I don't know, like, but the, the pre-workout timing and all that, the, the best time was the freaking post-workout. Okay, so that's something that I've actually never really gone all in on is taking creatine post-workout. Because the thing is, it's not its not like a pre-workout. It doesn't get you psyched up. It doesn't get you fired up. I guess the only the only reason I've taken it before in the past pre-workout is kind of like a placebo effect. Like, oh, I'm shoveling some creatine. You know, it's extra juicy for this workout. You know what I'm saying? No, take a freaking post-workout. 
Look at it the same way as you look at like uh, protein and sugar and stuff like that. post workout when the freaking muscle cells are starving. They want to leech, grab onto these suckers. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and then on top of that, guys, the freaking numbers, right? 0.1 gram per kilogram. Okay, that's 12 and a half grams for me. That's over double what I've ever taken for just a uh, maintenance phase. And then, you know, freaking loading up on that sucker. 37 and a half grams, holy buckets. And uh, I don't know, in the past I've always kind of looked at it as like, well, I don't want to take too much and stress my kidneys and stuff. But I guess they've done so much research on it that it, you know, that it just converts to creatinine or whatever and it's just excreted and it's not, there's no like really hazard in it. I mean, the biggest thing is I suppose to just drink a lot of water, which if you're a horse cocker yourself, you should be drinking a ton of water anyways. You know what I'm saying? Speed up the freaking recovery, flush the toxins, um, just keep the tissues hydrated, right? I mean, that's, I, I work out a lot in the morning, guys, now, and I'm sucking down some coffee and some pre-workout and stuff. And the biggest thing I notice now, because I'm trying to horse cock first thing in the morning, it's like, you know, my muscles are like kind of cramping and spazzing, all right? The hydration, guys, absolutely critical. Hyd I mean, that's like the s easiest thing ever is to just drink freaking water, you know? And there's no better way than um, just get like a jug. Let me, one second. This is like, oh, thank you for being my friend. Yeah. Something like this, like a freaking gallon jug, right? Don't put anything else in it. See, what I've done in the past is I'll put stuff in it. I'll put freaking coffee in it, and then I'll like leave it in the car, and then the coffee like molds or the freaking aminos or something just get all crusty, and I just end up throwing it away. But if you just get the freaking gallon jug and you just stick with just only water, like that alone, guys. Like you, the, the, you know what I'm talking about? Like, like all these kid, these supplements are gonna stress the kidneys and stuff. Well, let's freaking keep those kidneys healthy just by flushing enough water. And more than anything for the kidney health, we all know this now, is blood pressure is absolutely key, right? The, blood, the high blood pressure is what destroys your kidneys. So, you know, this is a whole different can of worms, but that, another reason I just uh, am starting to incorporate more cardio is just because I just want to, you know what I mean? We got to stay on top of our blood pressure, fellas. So whether it's just a dynamic warm up, like shuffling, karaoke, high knees, butt kicks, doing all that kind of stuff. Agility ladder, kind of like cardio movements, like fun cardio, like before a workout or doing that stuff post-workout or sprints or any of that kind of fun stuff, slide pushes, like just incorporate it. Because for the longest time, I would say over 10 years, like, cause I was always, I was like an athlete my whole life, basically. Uh, my blood pressure read a little high, but I was like, ah, I'm just have white coat syndrome. It's not a big deal. Like, but listen, if it's always reading a little bit high, is it white coat syndrome or is it just a little freaking high? So ever since I kind of came to that conclusion, I get older and wiser. I just asked my doctor for a blood pressure pill, right? So, um, I take Losartan. Okay, so I don't know if like some people ask me like, oh, it's a you know good blood pressure pill to take or whatever. I can't. It's, I don't remember exactly what it is, but it was one. It's one that specifically doesn't like hamper your performance. Okay. And for all I've seen from taking it is just lower blood pressure, right? My strength hasn't gone down because I know if you take like the beta blockers and the diuretics or something, your strength kind of takes a hit or your cardio takes a hit. With this one, nothing's affected and I just have lower blood pressure. So I can feel like I'm doing my duty, staying on top of that, kidney health, freaking hydration, throwing some cardio movements in there, okay? You can do it in a fun way where you can... Not only like, you know, people are like, oh, I don't do cardio, I want to lose gains. You can do the freaking cardio in a way that's going to just, you know, horse cock your gains. You know what I'm saying? Doing jumps, doing sprints, doing stairs, doing all that kind of stuff. Dynamic athletic movements. Like, do it, right? It's only going to help you. It's only going to help your health. It's going to help your performance. It's going to help your mobility. Um, so just on top of that, guys, I just wanted to talk about the freaking dosing because I was, listen, guys. <laughs> You know, I've been taking creatine, like I said, 20 years. And I always just kind of gone off of like, well, 20 grams loading phase, five grams maintenance phase. And it's like, if you just take a step back and say, wait a second, why is it 20 and five? Like, where does this come from? Like, it's based off of weight, body weight, okay? And that's that 20 and that five, that's based off of people that weigh, like, I'm not even, I'm not even kidding. That's like the average, per, like 140, 150 pounds. Like, do you weigh 140, 150 pounds? 
you're probably more. Or if you're 170, 180, 190, 200, 220, 240, two, you know what I'm saying? Like, of course, it's just like calories, just like protein. You know, they say, oh, you only need, like the freaking recommended daily allowance of proteins. Like, I don't even know. What even is it? It's like, it's freaking recommended daily allowance of protein. It's 50 grams. It's 50 grams. But what if you're a bulbous horse-like freak, okay? You think I need 50 grams? I'm not saying you need tons of protein. I've always been one to raise my hand and say, you don't need freaking mega dose protein, okay? It's probably only doing more harm than good. But you certainly need more than 50 grams if you're around to over 200 plus. You know what I'm saying? Even if you're a 180 pound jacked freak stallion, 50 grams ain't gonna get you very far. So it's the same thing with the creatine. Do we look at that? Like, I feel like for, for the longest time we've been looking at creatine, five grams and 20 grams, in the same light as that the recommended daily allowance of protein. But nobody looks at protein the same way. Nobody looks at calories. Are we all basing our freaking trying to bulk and stuff of a 2,000 calorie limit? You know what I'm saying? No. We're, you know, bulbous freaks, 5,000. You know what I'm saying? Like, so it makes sense with the creatine too, guys. Anyways, I just figured, like, if this shit hit me, like, holy buckets. Like a ton of freaking bricks. Let's give it to the boys. Let's give you a fresh golden tidbit. I don't know what you're doing tomorrow, but I'm going to be sucking down 37 and a half grams of creatine.